Walter? Yes, Joan. Another spy scare. Yes, they've arrested De Costa. Don't worry, Donnie. I've spoken to the consul. He's getting us away tomorrow on the first aircraft. How will we ever pack in time? Well, who cares? As long as we get away from this ghastly island. I can't believe it. I won't have to be frightened anymore. Who's that? Oh, I expect to tell him. Good evening, Mrs. Bernard. Your husband is at home? Who is it, Joan? Good evening, Mr. Bernard. It is my unpleasant duty to charge you with contravention of paragraph 5, subsection C24 of our criminal code. Espionage. You admit it? No, I do not. government has its secret service branch. America, CIA, France, Deuxième Bureau, England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. want to be a dictator, first find a hungry people. Tell them you will shoot their oppressors and fill their bellies. With enough guns and enthusiasm, it is not difficult to fulfill the first half of your promise. But when the excitement is over and they find that they are still hungry and you're liable to be shot yourself, it is then that you must persuade your ungrateful followers that there are new scapegoats that stand between them and two square meals a day. And where do you find your scapegoats? Minority groups and foreigners, of course. Who cares what happens to them? Now, Mr. Bernard was no more a spy than you are. He was just a New York press correspondent trying to be fair and objective. And it was on his behalf that I flew to the island of Montigue. I drove straight up under the hills to talk to my old friend, General Abeon. Even if Walter Bernard were guilty, which we know he's not, surely it'd be better to have him deported rather than to have this sort of headline appear on the front page of every newspaper in the States. Yeah, you're right, John. But at the moment, our people are drunk with success. And now our government is even flouting Uncle Sam himself. Oh, it's a heady brew. Keeps their mind off their troubles for a week or two, until another entertainment can be devised. If they go any further, they won't be able to draw back. I don't think that Colonel Rodriguez intends to draw back. After all, there is nothing like a full-dress spy trial to give the island a Roman holiday. But Rodriguez is only a policeman. Surely you could persuade the president that he's making the, the most monumental blunder. Oh, our chief of police has the ear of President Santos. He is his friend. He was also the friend of our late President Gomez. He's everybody's friend. He's a very clever politician. Too clever. One day he will come uh, unstuck, as you say. Hmm? I wait for that day. Mrs. Bernard at home? Yes, poor lady. Oh, would you tell her I'd like to speak to her, please? My name's Drake. She's sleeping for the first time in two days. She has packed all her things and stacked them. She's waiting to leave the moment her husband is released. She won't eat or go to bed. She just sits there. Chloe, who's that? There now, we've woken her. Is it about my husband? Have you any news? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Bernard. But I'd like to talk to you about him, uh, if I may come in. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, my name is Drake. I've just arrived from the States, and I'm here to give your husband whatever help I can. You all right? Thank you. Um, may I sit down? Please do. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Bernard, I'd be very grateful if you could uh, put me in the picture. And needless to say, of course, we know that your husband is not a spy. Now, what ideas have you as to why he was arrested? Well, you see, my husband's in the international press. Colonel Rodriguez gets very angry when his papers criticize Montique. Walter couldn't make him understand that he's paid to wire the truth. 
Colonel Rodriguez warned him that if the criticism went on, he'd make an example of him. So he had him arrested and charged with espionage. But what's his case? What's he using for evidence? His men turned the apartment inside out. They found incriminating documents, of course. They made sure of that. They brought them with them. Madam, my friend has information that could win your husband's release. Would $10,000 be too much to ask? If you want to talk business, be at the Colony Club in five minutes' time. Ask the barman for Pietro. Take a man in a certain situation. Add a girl to that certain situation. Take a night, a suitable night. And what have you got? You got love, add or moon to this certain conjugation. Dated June to give a little conflagration. Sight it right, a suitable sight. And what have you got? Pietro, eh? You got love. Here is a simple equation. People and flesh plus... Oh, Pietro is waiting outside. Add what you will, you'll find you still... Thank you very much. With the baby. Take a man in a certain situation, add a girl to that certain situation. Take a man. Are you looking for Pietro? That's right. Then step right in, sir. What's that for? When bargaining, they say you should always talk from strength. Well, they also say that live men are the best players. But, sir, I was not thinking of killing you. May I drive you to your hotel, sir? Thank you very much. The Miramar, please. What's it all about? I invited the lady to come and talk business. Not you, sir. But you said that your friend had information for sale. Now, I am negotiating for my friend. Now, don't be coy. What have you got? I have nothing, sir. But my friend has information. Damning information. If it were used intelligently, it could win Mr. Bernard's release. You say that this information is damning. Damning to whom? The chief of police. Colonel Rodriguez. What has your friend got on him? A letter in his own hand. To whom was this letter written? Alexander Gomez, our late president. And dated? Last April, at the time of the revolution. It seems that our chief of police was not certain which side would win. So he backed both sides. The revolution succeeded. President Gomez and his leaders were put against the wall and shot. Colonel Rodriguez saw to that. He thought that by shooting them, he would destroy all evidence of his own treachery. But there is still the letter. My friend has it. And the price of $10,000 must be quite a letter. But it is so. If the new president saw it, it would most certainly be Colonel Rodriguez's death warrant. Here is your hotel. I shall talk to my friend and arrange a meeting. Don't go out. Wait for me to call. Rodriguez, Chief of Police, at your service. Good evening, Colonel. I was wondering how long would it be before we met. I've been selling your passport. You travel a great deal. It says here you are a journalist. Then I must be. Where to find my passport? It was in your grip. What else did you find in my grip? Well, nothing of interest. You travel light. A journalist. I hope you haven't come here to write lies about us. Well, that's a difficult question, Colonel, because what is truth to me could be lies to you. It is not difficult, Mr. Drake. Lies are anything we do not like to have said about our country. That's one way of looking at it. Oh, by the way, Colonel, if you're keeping my passport, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to uh, give me a receipt for it? But of course. Thank you. 
You flew in from Washington yesterday, Mr. Drake. That's right. Since then, you have visited General Labayon at his home in the mountains. You have also visited Mrs. Bernard's apartment. You're very well informed. You would do well to remember that. Perhaps you will tell me what story you're covering. Oh, but there are so many intriguing things in Montigue. The, the Bernard case, for instance? The spy. I must warn you to publish nothing about him until the trial. You might find yourself on trial for contempt of court. Oh, but you don't have to be on contempt of court to get arrested in Montigue. They tell me it can even be an offense to uh, breathe here. I see you are not in sympathy with my government, Mr. Drake. We have no use for your kind here. Good night, Mr. Drake. I will tell the airline to reserve a seat for you on the morning flight. Your passport will be waiting for you at the airport. Uh, please don't bother, Colonel. I can make my own reservation when I'm ready. Drake here. Yes, Pietro. I have spoken to my friend. The meeting is arranged. Go straight round to the Colony Club. Ask for Martin. Yes, it is still $10,000. You must talk about that with Martin. John Drake. Come right in, Mr. Drake. Daddy, give Mr. Drake a drink. Thank you, darling. Oh, so it's you. Now sit down. Thank you. Now run away. What is this? Who is this guy? None of your business, my angel. Go downstairs, buy yourself a drink, and keep away from those girls. First, have you the money? I should like to see the $10,000. First, I should like to see the letter. It is not here. Then I'll say goodnight. And uh, thanks very much for the drink. You thought I would have the letter here for Pietro, or you, or anybody else to rob me of it? If you have the money, I will take you with me, show you the letter. You can read it, and if you are interested, you buy it. Well, that's one person. I can't think of another. Oh, what is that? I go with you. You haven't any letter, but you have some friends waiting. They beat me up and take the money. <laughs> what kind of a woman do you think I am? I really have no idea. Don't you trust me? I'm afraid I can't afford to. Singer. We had information that her life had been threatened. She's up in her room. Is she all right? This gentleman has just left her. Good evening, Mr. Drake. Good evening, sir. Yes, she's quite all right. Then it must have been a false alarm. Ask her to come down. like a drink, Colonel. No. Thank you, no. Colonel. What is it? You better come and see for yourself, sir. You've 
killed her. You've killed her! I left you alone with her. He shot her. Get him downstairs. Search the room. Mr. Drake, you were the last person to see her alive. So I killed her? Yes. How? With a gun. I have no gun. No, you threw it out of the window. Pepe, look beneath the window. You will find a gun there. How is it that no one heard the shot? The gun was fitted with a silencer. Now, why should I want to kill Martine? That is what you're going to tell me, Mr. Drake. And a silencer. You thought of everything, didn't you? I think you had better make a statement. Let's stop Drake. playing games, shall we? We both know exactly what happened. She was shot from the roof over there by one of your men. Wait outside. Mr. Drake. If you consider the matter, you will agree that I have a complete case against you. You have a letter of mine. You bought it from Martine. I want it. You either have it or you know where it is hidden. You must realize it would be a great mistake to alienate my sympathy at this time. Murder is a capital charge in this country. All right, Colonel. You win. I, uh, I have the letter. John Drake. All right, thank you. Well, Mrs. Bernard, I, I think that everything's going to be all right. Now, two things. First, I've arranged to meet General LeBay on here with your permission. Second, when I've seen him, after I've gone, I want you to take a taxi to the airport and wait there for your husband. He's been released? Uh, not yet, but I have an idea that he's going to be. Will that be? Uh, uh, Who is that? Colonel Rodriguez, madame. I'll be right with you. Good evening, Mrs. Bernard. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Is it about my husband? Have you got news? No, we are looking for your friend, Mr. Drake. My friend? I hardly know him. That may well be, but he was seen in the street below a minute ago. May I come in? Thank you, Mrs. Bernard. If Mr. Drake should turn up, you will, of course, inform me. You would not want to assist a murderer, would you? A murderer? Yes, Mrs. Bernard. Good evening. Mr. Drake? Mr. Drake, where are you? I'm here. Sorry. The colonel tells me that you're wanted for murder. Oh, yes, I'm a murderer, like your husband was a spy. I see. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Bernard. The general will be here in a few moments, and then I can get moving. But when you go out, they'll see you. Colonel Rodriguez's men will catch you. Oh, tonight I am going to catch Colonel Rodriguez.
Mr. Drake, what are you doing here? Have you come to murder me too? No, I've just come for a little chat. Oh, if you take my advice, you, you won't use that gun, Colonel. Why not? I wake and find an intruder in my room. It would be the most natural thing to shoot you. Oh, natural, perhaps, but unwise. You see, Colonel, I've had time to uh, place that letter of yours. I left it with a friend. If anything should happen to me, it would be delivered immediately to President Santos. You intending to blackmail me, Mr. Drake? Yes. You know, you've been very unwise, Colonel. You've changed sides twice too often. What do you imagine that President Santos would think about that note of yours? At a time when he was hard-pressed, you were writing to his enemy to promise your allegiance. How can you be certain that the note was really written by me? <laughs> there can be no doubt about it. You see, Colonel, you were kind enough to give me a specimen of your handwriting and your signature earlier this evening. To say the least of it, your conduct has been treacherous and despicable. Please don't moralize. It bores me. I just had the very natural desire to be on the winning side. What do you want? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you to order Walter Bernard's release immediately and have him delivered to the airport in time for the dawn flight. I am willing to consider it. But I must have the note first. No. You pick up that telephone, order his release immediately, and then perhaps we can do business. Very well. But if I do not have the note within minutes after the flight has left, you're a dead man. The duty captain. This is Colonel Rodriguez. I feel if it is you. We have decided to deport Walter Bernard. Have him put in a car immediately and taken to the airport. Mr. Drake, you're half of the bargain. We will go and collect the note. I'm afraid we can't do that. What? Unfortunately, you shot Martine before she'd time to get it. Then I see no reason why I should not shoot you. Oh, yes, there is, Colonel. A very good reason. This. Every word we've said here tonight has been relayed to General Abayon and his staff. Uh, General, would you kindly tell the Colonel that I'm not fooling him any longer? All right, General, he's listening. Good morning, Colonel. I've waited a long time for this. You really have been talking too much this morning. To say the least of it, your conduct has been treacherous. Forget it, Colonel. The General has the house surrounded. Then all I can do is to shoot myself, Mr. Drake. But first I shall have the pleasure of shooting you. You see, Colonel, I took the precaution of removing the shells before uh, waking you. All right, good morning, gentlemen. 